All right, here I'm gonna make this Celtic knot at the end here using a few different tools that might be a little bit more advanced, but it will help us create this kind of uh, intricate interwoven shapes together, which is a pretty cool thing here using this shape builder tool. But let me get started here. I'm gonna keep my layers open because I'm using a base layer here just to help me out there. And I have a new layer, my working layer, which I'm actually gonna work on. This just base layer just gives me an idea how to start it off and kind of run through that. Uh, then I'm going to use my stroke panel to just kind of adjust the strokes, how I'm going to use them. I'm going to use my swatch panel. And what I've done on my swatch panel already, because of I know how it's going to end up, I have a dark green and a light green. Uh, just to have the swatches ready, you'll see later why I use that. And I'm also going to have my pathfinder open because I want to be able to divide it later. So I'll show you all about that. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a triangle. And the best way to create a triangle is to get the star tool. And as I just click and drag, if I use my arrows on my keyboard, and press up I add more points to it if I go down and my arrow keys it ends up making as three which is the minimum you could have I'm also going to hold down shift to keep it um, perfectly um, a perfect triangle and that's it I can just hold down shift and let go and now I have a perfect triangle it's got its path I made a path very nice and that's all I'm gonna do for here so that's kind of what I did here I just made a triangle done I can shrink it down a little bit just to make sure everything fits inside but if you have a larger artboard which is fine you could make it however big you want the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to make some circles so I'm going to click on my shape tool again and go to the ellipse tool but this time and, and keep in mind I have my smart guides on just as I go through this you can see there's a pink line that my cursor has and I as I hover over other areas it shows me I'm about to intersect something or find the center of something if you ever want to shut it off you obviously can do that smart guides but in this case I actually want them on command U so keep them on it's gonna be very helpful so now that I have my circle ready and I it's gonna snap to this point what I want to do I'm gonna make a circle but I'm gonna hold on option so that I can keep it uh, pulling from the center and I'm gonna hold on shift so it stays a perfect circle and what I'm gonna do I want that circle to almost like touch the tip of that uh, triangle on the other side so right there done now what I could do I could either make another one but I prefer to just use the same ones I've already been using because uh, it's already a perfect circle and it's the same size so I'll keep them all the same size so instead of me making another circle I'm just gonna duplicate this and how do we duplicate I'm gonna hold on option as I hover over the path and I'm just gonna click and drag but I'm also gonna hold down shift now as well to make sure that it all stays uh, perfectly on a zero degree angle as I scroll as I bring it over I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna hold option click and drag and now I'm going to hold down shift as well. Actually, no, I'm not going to hold down shift because it's not going to go to 45 degree angle. I'm just going to hold down option to make sure it lines to the center of my circle, goes to the point of that triangle. So now I have three circles that intersect. The center point of the circle intersects with the points of the triangle. So now I have three. So what I'm going to do here just to make sure it all fits in, I'm going to select all three just by clicking a kind of imaginary box. And I'm just going to hold down shift and drag them down proportionally. If you hold down shift, it will keep things proportional for you. Okay. So I have that done there and I've kind of done that part here. It's the same thing. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring these over. And once again, I'm going to shrink. I'm just going to take these ones and shrink them down because they're kind of in my way right now. Uh, and I'm going to take those and I'm going to now, what I can do, I'm going to get rid of that triangle. I don't need the triangle anymore. I, what I'll do is I'll just select the three circles. Then I'll hold down shift and I'll just select the triangle what it does it'll deselect everything else and only select the thing that wasn't selected so there I go so now what I'm gonna do I'm going to enlarge the strokes and expand them so let's go to the stroke panel and let's enlarge the strokes let's go to 70 points so I did roughly about 70 point and what I'm gonna do now just to be on the safe side I'm gonna change the stroke to black just so I'll play with the color after. So my strokes are at 70 point. So what I want to do now, I don't want them to be strokes anymore. I want them to be uh, paths, or sorry, not a path, a, a filled shape. So the way to do that is actually go to object and expand. What that does, it says, do you want to expand the fill and the stroke? Well, mainly I just want to expand the fill, or sorry, the stroke to a fill, but I'll just keep that as that. And now it's no longer a stroke that made it. They're all uh, shapes filled shapes so there's no stroke there is a stroke but on the outside of it now which I could add a stroke to it so either way here I am and what I'm gonna do now what it says is I'm gonna uh, change it so now the strokes are fills and the fills are strokes so there's gonna be I'm just gonna do this little flip here so I'm gonna have a no fill but I'm gonna have a stroke so I'm gonna do that flip and that's exactly what I want so now I just have I just have strokes but no fills great so I'm just gonna bring this over here and now I have this part that I'm working on. Um, and that's it, so now I've completed that part and I'm going to now bring this over. And as I brought this over, 
Now what I can do, I'm going to select all of them because now I have overlapping shapes. And because I have overlapping shapes, I'm able to use the Pathfinder tool because the Pathfinder tool only works if you have overlapping shapes. So I'm going to click on divide and what divide is going to do, it's going to divide all these little areas that intersect into their own separate shapes. So I'm going to divide, done. Now if I click on it once, the whole thing is grouped together because that's what Pathfinder does. And once Pathfinder is selected and it did its job, it groups everything together. If I want to separate and just select certain parts, I can just use my white arrow tool and it'll select a certain path. Or if I still want to use my black arrow tool, that's all I have to do is ungroup. I go to object, ungroup, and it ungroups everything. And then using my black arrow tool, I can still select all the, those individual shapes that were created by using divide. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to select the pieces I don't need because I'm going to end up with this piece here. I'm going to get rid of that and that and that. Just to hover over and press delete on your keyboard. And that's it. So now I have this final piece here. Fantastic. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this over. And now I'm going to add another circle in between. There's a circle that's going to go in between. And what's going to happen, that's going to be the circle that kind of inter, uh, intertwines between all these objects too. So let's make another circle. So I'm going to find the circle. Now this one you might want to move. It might not be perfect the way it's going to be lined up in here. So I'm just going to take an intersection point and I'm just going to, once again, hold down Option and hold down Shift to make a circle. And I'm going to do the same thing by adding a 70 point weight. Okay, there it is. And now here I'm going to zoom in, Command Plus. And what I'm going to do, I want to make sure that I have equal amount of spacing here in between these areas and equal amount of spacing here in these areas. So I'm just going to shrink it down, first of all, just to be on the safe side. Okay, and I'm just going to bring it down using my arrow keys on my keyboard. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit and see if I could find a happy medium where these are all at. And that's about good. I have decent space there and there and there. It looks somewhat equal. And I have decent space here, here, and here. It looks somewhat equal as well. Maybe I could bring that over just a little bit more this way. And there we go. So it looks pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect, but once again, you can get it pretty perfect. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to go to Object, and I'm going to expand this. And I'll say OK. And then I'm just going to, once again, revert it. So now it's got a stroke and no fill. And now if I want, just in case they weren't the same, I could change the stroke to be the exact same. I'm going to hover over all of them, select everything, and I'm going to make the point one. Once again, not that it really matters, and we could even change that later, but in the meantime, all the stroke weights are the same. So now the fun part comes where I'm actually going to start making the interwoven parts here. So it's not that difficult if you go slow and while well, a little um, helper is having to look at something to make sure you're doing it right. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to select everything and then use the shape builder tool. Now, if I don't have anything selected, the shape builder tool will not work. There's nothing there. You have, to, you have to select something first in order for the shape builder tool to work. And now what the shape builder tool will say is like, yeah, not a problem. You have everything selected. Now let's actually start building shapes out of the smaller little shapes you have. So right now I'm going to create this area here. So I can find that area here and I'm just going to click and drag over the shape areas that I want to create into turn into one shape. So there you go. That's one shape now. It's on its own. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to create this one here. So let me start here. And I'm just going to click and drag like that. And now I've created another shape. I'm going to do the same here. Click and drag. And now I've made another shape. Great. Now I'm going to create this shape here. I'm going to do this circle. I'm just going to go like this. There's mine. And I'm going to make the other part here. I'm just going to click and drag. There I go. And then once again, click and drag. There I go. So now I've made that part. Now I just have to finish off with these little areas here. So I'm going to go here, do this one. I'm just going to click and drag. And I'm going to make uh, this area here. I'm just going to click and drag. And then I'm going to, well, I forgot this area. I got to make that area too. Click and drag there. And I believe I am done with all those. Great. So now what I can do is I can now start coloring this thing in because it's made, it's, it's done, it's finished. But in order to make the same kind of style of lines I made here with a little bit of shadow underneath to really show kind of like there's some depth. Uh, I need to use the gradient tool, but with this gradient tool, I'm going to use this freeform gradient, which is a really, really useful. And this is where I brought in the idea that I made my own swatches already ahead of time. Uh, and let me just ungroup all this just to make sure. Cool. So now I click on one and I can just work with that. So to use the gradient freeform, uh, I'm going to just click on it. And now it usually automatically fills yeah, to a certain color, which is totally fine. Doesn't matter. I'm going to change it anyways. Now to make your own swatch, if you're not too sure, you could just double click here or go here and um, I can't make a new swatch there yet. Can I? 
Uh, I'm gonna go back to normal, probably because I'm on the greedy, and that's why. And no, it still can't do it, and that's okay. So I am gotcha, that's why. So I was on the gradient, uh, which is, uh, sorry, I was on the fill, which happened to be a gradient, and you can't make a loose watch from there. That's all right. I'm just clicked on my, I can just click off of this, say none. Then I can go here. Oh, and make a new swatch here. Great. So I can make a new swatch. And whatever you want color you want it to be, you should have a light and a dark, or at least a medium tone and a dark tone. If you want to add three, so you have a medium, a dark, and a light, you can do that as well. So then you know, I could just make that color, a new swatch, and usually I like to play with CMYK. And I'm going to keep it a global color. I like global colors using those, and you know, make whatever color you want and say okay and then it'll automatically add to your swatch panel wherever that was uh, obviously i didn't need that one so that's okay either way i'm going to go to my gradient i have this selected and now with that that's all i have to do here instead of having to go to the gradient panel do it i can do everything right here so i'm going to double click on this one and i'm going to go to it brings up my swatch panel and there are my grouped swatches that i wanted to use so this one's going to be the medium tone Great, click off. I'm gonna click on this one. This one's gonna be my dark tone, great. And this one here, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna just click on that, double click, and it's gonna be my dark tone as well. Now this one, what I can do, I can actually make it a little bit bigger. Click on this little circle here and make it bigger. So now it covers more area, which is what I want. And that's it, and you can play around with these as you go. You can't really shrink them too much. You can only make them a little bit bigger. This is as small as they get, which is totally fine. I can kind of reposition them and that's done. So now I'm gonna do these one by one. I'm going to select the next piece here and once again I'm just going to click on the freeform gradient it's going to add its own oh look it already kind of added certain ones but I'm not sure if these are the correct ones either way I'm going to select them and there I go I make the right one there and I double click and choose the right one there if by chance you happen to see this you could change up and make any color you want here uh, the spread of it and the opacity can you can control that there you can choose obviously your swatch panel which will show up or and you change your opacity and spread and you could actually choose a color that's already pre-existing on your screen on your artboard anywhere you want but obviously i want to uh and not use that i just want to use my swatch because i've already set it up so that's my dark one and click off that's my um medium tone one right there but you'll notice something that happened here uh, what illustrator did it added another little swatch area for me which i don't want it added white that's all i have to do press delete click on it press delete it's gone so nice and easy and there i go make this a little bit bigger and there i am and now once again i'm just going to continue doing this and whatever it gives me i'm just going to work with and if i if i need more i'll just click then double click and it adds one and I can change the color to it. Double click and there I go. I got another one. And there I am, I've completed that. They are kind of all interwoven there. And what I could do if I want, I could add a stroke to it, which is totally fine, and kind of play around with a different kind of style, different kind of look. I could do whatever I want. Now this one up here I've shown, I've used, instead of using the freeform uh, tool, I've used uh, just a normal gradient tool, which is, is good. It works fine as well, but I feel I have a little bit more control with the freeform gradient as opposed to the linear gradient, um, anything like that. So this is the, uh, how we make a Celtic knot using Shape Builder tool in Illustrator.